Somebody's soul is in jeopardy if you're not perfect. Right. So, you first. Oh, wow. Uh, burn me on it. Um, I think, well, I have to speak from experience being a PK, um, especially when you are a PK. Um, there are, I want to say, stipulations that come with being a PK. You have to dress a certain way, you have to talk a certain way, you have to, you know, um, you just have to be appropriate at all times and it seems as though you know like you don't have an outside escape from it which i feel like is why a lot of uh, a lot of uh, people will say pks are wild um when they're not in church um but i feel like if people were more vulnerable if they were a lot more um open to huh accepting yeah accepting of just being a person as as is um and allow you to make the mistakes that you're going to make and allow you to be who you are instead of saying okay well the title comes first then you know a lot of people will be more open to being who they are and then accepting god in the role that he plays in with them exactly. um i just personally for me um, i didn't grow up being a pk i just grew up in church and when i became a pk you know it kind of like the roles kind of switched for me so, um, stop putting a, 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 
a stipulation on people. That's all I can right. say. That's my only advice. Like, don't put a stipulation on people. Don't try to um, box in people because you can't box in God. You can't have an expectation of what God is supposed to be or who, what he's supposed to do or what he can do for you. Because when you do that, then you allow yourself to miss out on your blessings. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing for people. If you uh, if you put them in a box, you allow, if you, if, in your mind, you, what if you're supposed to get your blessing from that person? What if you're supposed to, you know, talk to that person and actually um, receive what it is, their testimony, and because you're so, you're so close-minded, you can't even receive what it is God is trying to get you to understand. So I, I said, stop boxing people in. Don't, don't put a stipulation on people. A lot of people to really be human beings. Right. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes we forget that, like, the next person, the pastor or the singer or the whatever, they're also human beings. They go through life trials just like you do. Right. Just because they have a title does not mean that they don't, they don't face tri tri trials and tribulations. They actually face it harder. Yep. Because yeah. they have a title. That's and oftentimes, true. you you forget that the title is just a title. Mm. It's not, how do I explain it? It does not make a person change overnight. Because it took for, it took for you to be the habits, for you to have the habits that you have, it took time for you to build that habit. Mm -hmm. You're not going to change overnight mm -hmm. with what you took 20 years to build. Right. So when you see people and you see a pastor, you oh, the pastor curses or like, oh, the pastor eats what you don't like. It's like, at the end of the day, God still saw them, flaws and all, and called them. Mm -hmm. So who are you to dictate when it's appropriate for them to be used by God? Yeah. Mm. Not only that, like, oh, I'm sorry. Are you about to go? Mm. Oh, I, yeah, go I, I can go. I can go. <laughs> I'm going to start backwards and, uh, and, and, and go for Okay, so I used to be in a point where I always cared about people's thoughts and opinions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I could care less about it now, to be honest with you, because at the end of the day, I'm here to please God and to be all God has made me to be. Because think about it. If you're so worried about what people think about you and you're more focused on satisfying people, then those people are becoming your God. Ooh, and when come, I on now. That, come on now. Don't do that. I gotta get this point out. So the Bible says, you know, the Ten Commandments, the first commandment, there should be no other God before me. Mm, come on so now. if you're worried about what other people think about you and how you should do things, then they are your God. So, but think about it like this is if if they are your God, think about it like this. Did they send their only begotten son for you? Mm. Did they watch over you both day and night? Come on now. Think about that. Talk about it. So I rather trust in God, the one who sent his only begotten son for me, the one who watches over me both day and night, because he's gonna lead me in the direction that I need mm. to go in. Come on now. So be who you are in God. Let God lead that God and direct your path. You know, one thing about it. I, Talking about times, you know, I just so happen to be a licensed minister. You know, I am who I am, but at the same time, I have fun, I laugh. One of my favorite TV shows is the hell's the hell not. I ain't ashamed to say that. Come on. I like wrestling. But at the end of the day, when it comes to my connection with Jesus, yeah. mm, I love God. You don't Your love God? God? What's wrong with you? you? Okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay, and I have a question. So how important is it? to make sure to say no mm. Mm. because for me i can speak for me from my experiences it is super hard for me to say no because i it's not because i'm scared that that person is gonna get hurt but it's more so because i've experienced hurt and i never want to make the next person totally have to yeah. feel that because mm -hmm. like i don't want them to wish the love that i wish for mm. so how important is it when it comes to Christianity to say no and say yes to yourself? BJ. Ooh, it's hard to say no. Um, Ministry-wise, even life-wise, it's hard for me to say no. But the important thing is you got to take care of yourself because I wish I had two glasses. Let's say, for example, if someone is empty and they need to be poured into, you can't you can't be empty yourself trying to pour into something because you're not giving anything. Mm. That's why it's important to say, you know what, I love you and I wish I could help you, but I got to focus on me right now. Because if I was to help you, it really wouldn't be helping you. I'm spreading my own contamination that I got to get fixed. Mm. So that's why it's important to say, you know what, I got to take a step back. You know, self-care is so important, mm. especially in the Christian life, because you got to always be on it. You, you, you can't be slacking. Go ahead, take yourself out. Go ahead, go for a walk. Start journaling. Do those things. 
because we got to be ready to help others. And 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 at, at times you got to say no. It, it hurts because you know you if you truly are saved and you had that connection with Jesus, automatically you're gonna want to help people. Right, right. So saying no, it may hurt, but you got to do what's best for your walk. And then when you get yourself together, that's when you can say, okay, I can go back and I can you know I can start back helping people the way I need to be helping them. But you can't pour your empty cup into somebody else's empty cup because you're spreading. Yeah. Mm. Illusion basically. Mm -hmm. Wow. Go ahead. Um, I think it, it starts off with any relationship that you have, um, which is why it's, it's most, mostly hard to say no to the people that you care about or the people that you would like to help. Um, and, you know, genuinely, I'm just a sweethearted person, and I try my best to help anyone that I come into contact with, even if it's just a word. Um, a word of encouragement, a word of affirmation, you know, to, to reassure people that I love. Um, but I've always been in a position where I've always poured poured into people and then I'll be, in, I'll be stuck. Like, I'll be stuck because there is no one to pour back into me. And I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful that God sent me very few, it's very few people, but, you know, and these are one of, uh, well, two of the few people, but it's, it's so good to have people that pour back into you or, you know, while you're both going through, you know, y'all both praying together, y'all both standing in the gap for one another. You know, I, I, I love that. But most importantly, when you are able to to go forth in God and as you get stronger in your walk, as you get stronger in your relationship with God, it is so important to say no sometimes because there is no growth without without allowing yourself to grow. There is no growth without allowing yourself to grow. Now, everyone around you may be doing all the things that are necessary to them, but like BJ said, if there's no one pouring into you, how can you pour, in, pour into other people? Um, which includes taking the time to get to know yourself, start loving yourself again. If you went through a breakup, it's time to get back on to you. Find the things that make you happy again. Find the things that make you smile again. Because no one else can do it for you. No one else can take the time to say, you know what? T, uh, Y, B, uh, let, let's, <laughs> let's figure out what, what you like again. I know what she was going with that. With for real, right, because, you, <laughs> because you, you, you lose yourself in the process sometimes when you try to love so many other people, but you don't get the love back in return. And because you're doing that, you're, you're, you're taking so much from, you're taking joy and pride and peace from yourself. But you, who is giving that back to you in return? That's true. Um, I'm reminded, well, before I say this, she said something that was like very phenomenal to me. She, um, sometimes a no come with a blessing. Mm. Ooh, it's yeah. a blessing and a no. Instead of you going to, sometimes God wants to, he wants you to be in a solitude. But you're so busy helping other people that as he's helping you, you can't receive what he's releasing for you. Because you're busy trying to release for somebody else. And oftentimes, we think that we're helping people, but actually you're working out of your flesh. Because God doesn't deal with hurt. He doesn't He doesn't deal with fear. You're, you're, you're pushing yourself because you're fearful of the person not liking you or you're fearful of the person rejecting you. And that is, even though you started off, we wanted to do something for God and it, it, it end up turning into something you do for your flesh. Mm. So I said that to say there's a story in the Bible with the Abraham and Lot, right? Um, Abraham um, had to leave. Abraham had to leave his land so that God can bless him, right? And God told him to take your, take your wife and your family and leave. So when he left, he took his nephew with him, which is Lot. As they got to this new land, um, Lot and his Lot and Abraham's tribe were what's the word? Were button heads. So it got to the point where like Abraham had to tell him, like, okay, like our tribe aren't getting along and this is getting a little out of hand. So one of us gotta leave. So they stood up, up on the mountain and they looked over and then were like Abraham was like, pick where you wanna go and I'm gonna go the opposite direction. So with that, God showed me showed me the qualities of friendships and the quality of people that you need to have in your life. It's okay for you to love people because the way I am built, I'm not like them. Well, we're all different. But the way I am built, I can initially love somebody without even knowing them. Like from the moment my eyes set on you and I, I know of your existence, I instantly love you. 
and that's not now we talking about that's not that's not a me lying to you if I say I love you and I don't know I genuinely really love you. Now there's different levels of love for me, but I have a general love for everybody. So with that, God tells this sometimes where God will be like, um, be in this person's life, or this person's a mission, or this person is this and this person is that for you. Oftentimes I tend to turn those missions into friendships when I'm not that's not the purpose of those of of that particular thing, right? So when it came to Lot and Abraham, God showed me that the qualities of how I can tell when somebody is a, a, a mission and somebody's a friend. Mm. Missions come with the intention of temporary. Mm. Friendships come with the intention of permanent. Mm. And mm. friendships come with the intention of me, you give and I give and we both give for the betterment of each other. Mm -hmm. A mission is I give for you I'm pointing to you so that you right so that you can grow and I can move on to the next project. Mm -hmm. So with Lot, Lot was a mission for Abraham. It came to a point where um, they had to separate because the mission has now been completed. It is now it has is now hurting the person who's supposed to do the mission. Sometimes you keep your mission longer than it's supposed to have been there, and it ends up hurting your purpose. Mm. I don't know. So, when he told Lot to pick which side, Lot chose to pick the good thing and leave the person who was there for him the bad thing. Oftentimes, we have people in our lives that will pick what is, what is suitable for them and leave you with the scraps. Mm. They will give you the left shoe because they need the right shoes. Mm. Or they will, they, will, they will take the last and give you the minimum because that's just what, they're, that's, that's what a mission does. Mm. So... What God does is, because he saw your intention, and because he saw your heart, and because he knew what you were doing and the intention of it all, he changed it for the better. So when Lot picked the good and left Abraham with the bad, God ended up changing that and turning the good into the bad. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at it in deep, Abraham had to leave what Lot thought he left him that was bad. Is, am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Preach it. <laughs> Abraham had to leave what Lot thought was bad. Because Lot thought what he was going to, which is Sodom and Gomorrah, which he thought he was going to was the good place. But the good place is not always where you want to be. Mm. Where you should be is where God told you to be. Mm. Sometimes the facade of the grass is greener on the other side is just a painted picture. Mm. But when, by the time you get close to him, you see, oh, this is, just a, this is just a picture. It's too late for you. You are now in a situation that you need somebody else to come save you from. Mm. So Lot left Abraham with the bad. But Abraham had to leave the bad and come save him from the good. Mm. Like, it is so easy to get caught up in the things that the world, the, the society or what the world is trending or what, it, what, is, what looks good to other people. But you forget what looks good to God. Mm. What profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? So. How often do you lose yourself to social media? Do you lose yourself to the new Jordans or the new the new whatever and you're forgetting to tithe you're forgetting mm. to give to the kingdom you're forgetting to go and somebody's asking somebody's hungry outside waiting for food and you're forgetting to give because what God is going to ask you he's not going to ask you how fresh are you he's going to ask you did you feed me when I was hungry mm. did you clothe me when I was hungry oh, did you shelter me when I needed a home That's mm. right. or were you on social media doing hashtag I'ma help whoever where is your action? Where does your where does your heart lies when it comes to God? So Abraham left to go save Lot uh, and then bring him back. Right? Now with that, God showed me that do not allow the reality of you wanting to be a good person to shadow the reality of the actuality of what's really happening in real life. Mm -hmm. It's okay to have a good heart, it's okay to love like you love, but you also have to learn to guard your heart. For the Bible say you what pretty much scripture is that about the garden of heart? Uh, okay. I know in the Bible it says guard your heart. Because God, just like God doesn't want to see them hurt, he also doesn't want to see you hurt. Is it Proverbs? I don't know. Proverbs 5? I'm not sure. I know guard Proverbs. your heart. <laughs> that is all I'm saying. Guard, guard, guard it. Guard it. Because out of your heart comes your actions. Out of your heart comes your words. When you have a, a, a sword in your heart, you are not going to start acting out the sword to other people. Hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. And if I'm hurt... Come on, you. <laughs> Come on, you. Come on, girl. You if I'm hurt, 
and I don't I'm blinded by my hurt I don't see that I'm pinching you mm. I see that I'm doing what is good for you because I'm blinded by the hurt that's why it's so important for you to protect your heart because when, when you look at how how your actions before you think of something it comes from the heart mm. before it manifests into reality it comes from your heart yeah. before you even move it's from you you, you have felt in your heart then it came into your mind and then it came out in your actions. Mm -hmm. When God asks you to guard your heart, it's because he knows what the world is about. Mm -hmm. Jesus walked this earth and was spit on, was betrayed just for being a good person. And you think you human being who is imperfect, mm -hmm. you're not gonna go through anything mm -hmm. and you're not gonna face trials and tribulations. But the but, but the, the the testimony of it all is that you keep your love pure and you keep your heart content. Mm. In everything that you do, no matter how much pain you're going through, no matter how much somebody else has hurt you, the important thing is you, God is going to look at how you react. It's not what somebody does to you that God looks at it. It's what how you react to what somebody does to you that God looks at. Mm. That's what the blessing will be released onto you at. Is the fact that Abraham didn't have to leave where he was at to go save Lot. It's because he loved him. And he was a man of God. That he left his place of comfort mm. to go to a place to go save somebody else who looked over him and picked something else that he thought was good was better for them mm -hmm. so yeah that's a little nugget for today um i hope you loved it i hope you enjoyed it y'all have any final words i'm good you're good i'm good gotcha peachy okay peachy too <laughs> um you you said you said something uh, about being in your solitude right mm -hmm. there is sanity in solitude so when God puts you by yourself, allow yourself to that time to get to know God, get in God's presence. Or as my grandmother would say, get in God's face. So Ooh, ooh, yes. Don't don't <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, God. Yeah. <laughs> You're good. Growth oftentimes comes from solitude too. Mm -hmm. Growth oftentimes yeah, comes from solitude. Most most definitely. When God is doing his most best work. Mm -hmm. Is when you can't, well, when you feel like he's not doing anything at all. God is actually leaves you, God actually leaves you in that place where he can see where your faith lies, right? And how, what are the promises that you made to him and how are you going to keep them? See, and when, when you're by yourself and you take the time to get in his face and you say, God, you know, I'm, I'm still doing what it is that you called me to do. I'm still trying to, you know, be the person that you told me to be. I am still doing the things that you want me to do, but I can't hear from you. I, I, it seems like nothing is happening. Nothing is moving. And oftentimes when we're in, I know I keep saying that, <laughs> um, oftentimes we are in our storm and right before, you know, there's always a storm before, you know, the, the blessing hits, right? So we're in our storm, we're in, we're, but we're in this place where we're by ourselves and we feel like everything is going wrong. But that's exactly when God is doing everything that it is possible to make sure that you come out on top. But the enemy this is where a lot of people give the, the devil too much credit. The enemy is meant to meant to make you fall off track, right? So when you pause right there. Hold that thought. We're gonna end this right here. We do about to continue this. Just pause this real quick. Okay. Uh thank you so much for watching Christian Three. Um don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share with other people, and yeah, go to Facebook and we're about to go live on it. Alright, right, right. See you later. Don't forget what you're about to say. Uh -huh.